South Pars, right in the heart of the Persian Gulf, almost halfway between Qatar and Iran. Off the coast here lies one of the largest gas fields in the world. Offshore, under 65 meters of water, lie billions of cubic meters of natural gas. In the early 1990s, the Iranian government decided to launch the necessary work to tap into this immense natural treasure to meet the country's growing needs. In order to develop South Pars, the national Iranian oil company, NIOC, divided the field into 12 geographic sections, or phases, each phase representing a production of 28 million cubic meters of gas per day. In September 97, NIOC awarded the development of Phase 2 and Phase 3 to Total Fina Elf, partnered by Gazprom and Petronas. That was the start of a tremendous project involving the processing of 56 million cubic meters of gas per day, practically half the gas consumption of a country the size of France, along with the production of 80,000 barrels per day of condensate. Without a doubt, this was the largest development of its kind ever undertaken in Iran. The job in hand was enormous since everything had to be built. Onshore, a processing plant covering 150 hectares plus all the infrastructure for its operations. Offshore, a group of unmanned platforms to supply the plant with gas. And in between, two pipelines linking the platforms to the plant. Two pipelines stretching 105 kilometers each. In 1998, when the work first began on the Asaluye site, there was a desert and nothing else. No industrial infrastructure, no port, and so no offloading facilities, and certainly no hotels. Yet after a few months of extraordinary effort in the blazing sun, in temperatures that can top 50 degrees Celsius in summer, a whole town soon took shape, with its own restaurants, sleeping accommodation, clinic, bakery, sports fields, even a cinema. By autumn 1999, water and electric power were being produced on site and the camp of South Pars was completely self-sustaining. The building of the plant itself could now begin. For Total South Pars, the challenge was to coordinate the activities of the many parties involved, all the local and international companies, contractors that would work side by side and often hand in hand to build this giant size complex. The figures speak for themselves when you consider that this work meant moving 7 million cubic meters of earth, pouring 130,000 cubic meters of concrete, and tracing 16 kilometers of road. It meant laying 2,200 kilometers of cable, assembling 15,000 tons of mechanical structures, plus 520 kilometers of pipes of all sizes and it meant transporting and setting up more than 1,000 pieces of equipment with an overall weight totaling 120,000 tons, including a boiler that weighed some 300 tons alone. Many Iranian companies took part in building the various elements for this site. The pipes were made in Awaz. The coating for the pipes in Koramshah. While the SPD-4 platform and related elements were constructed in Bandar Abbas. At the same time, high emphasis was placed on training and the transfer of competencies. 
some 150 Iranian managers became team members or worked directly with the project teams. For 650 Iranian managers, intensive training programs were set up in Tehran and Isfahan, spread out over several months. At Asaluye, thousands of operators and technicians had the possibility to gain hands-on experience in new processes and new ways of working. And for young graduates, it was an opportunity to become familiar with the sometimes complex situations they will need to face when their time comes to take over the reins at the plant. More than 10,000 people worked on the site on a permanent basis for nearly two and a half years. 90% of the workers in this giant team were Iranians who had come from the north of the country, since practically no workforce existed locally. But all in all, up to 21 different nationalities intermingled on the site each day. Relations with the local communities were always excellent. Naturally, in every step of the project, safety was a permanent concern. Material and equipment, as well as human behavior, were the object of close attention at all times. Surveillance of construction areas, reporting and immediate correction on site were part of the never-ending safety procedures undertaken. Iranian supervisors were specially recruited. And no less than 6,000 drills, exercises and training sessions were held to make sure that the most appropriate procedures were applied and to sharpen safety awareness amongst the employees of all companies. All along, work was continuing on land and sea. Offshore, two identical platforms were installed more than 100 kilometers off the coast, named SPD-3 and SPD-4. From these twin platforms, with some 10 wells per platform, the effluent has been flowing to shore since December 2001 via two multi-phase transport lines, because the gas is not treated offshore, but transported to the plant in Asaluye as is. This technique is called multi-phase transport, or wet scheme. At present, transporting petroleum fluids over such a distance is without a doubt state-of-the-art technology. Over a hundred kilometers of subsea pipes thus had to be assembled under very delicate technical conditions, using hyperbaric welding for the connections. From the well, all the effluent is thus brought to shore through the same pipe, which carries the mix of gas, oil and water from condensation. This requires the addition of additives to prevent hydrate formation and corrosion. On arrival, a slug catcher separates the gas and liquids and ensures steady flow. The completed onshore plant has four trains for the treatment of the gas, two units for the stabilization of the condensate and storage, plus compressors for the gas destined for export into the Iranian gas grid. It also has a 123 megawatt power station, which means enough power for a city with 100,000 people, as well as units for the recovery of sulfur, 400 tons per day, and all the installations necessary to make the whole plant autonomous. Gigantic facilities, tight deadlines, non-existent infrastructure at the start, Extreme environmental conditions requiring precautions like dams at the foot of the mountains to prevent flooding from runoff in case of heavy rains. Managing all these operations in one go, finding the necessary energy, skills and competencies, uniting the experience and know-how indispensable for such a challenge, all that was certainly no easy task. Yet here, along the Persian Gulf, a $2 billion industrial complex has grown right out of the desert. But this is only one step in a vast program that has many other developments on the drawing board, because in time, Asaluye will become a major gas and petrochemical hub on a worldwide scale. 
and phase two and three will then serve as a reference. There's no doubt that it took pioneering spirit to tackle such a project. Totalfina Elf and its partners are extremely proud to have completed it successfully, on time and within the budget. And that they are able to hand over to NEOC installations that combine high safety, performance and quality. In the village, in the school that was renovated as part of this great programme, the children can look forward to the future. They will surely live to the rhythm of this great oil adventure for a long time to come, until they, perhaps, as adults, take part in it themselves. <laughs>